How's it going guys? What I thought I would do in this video is just a little bit of uh, talk about N2. I know that many of you guys are probably in the same kind of situation that we found ourselves in in a few different uh, areas and that is what we need to do with some of the N2, some of the older devices. Uh, for those of you all who may not be familiar with what I'm talking about, N2 is a proprietary Johnson Controls form of communication for the Johnson Controls networks, things like that. It goes all the way back to like the NCMs, things like that, uh, those real old devices for those of you all who are familiar with them. And anyways, originally Johnson Controls tried to market it in a way to make it like an industry standard but it never worked out for them. It never, never worked out that way for whatever reasons. I don't remember the specifics about it. Anyways, that type of communication is basically obsolete, as, as many of you all know. It is not uh, being installed currently. Uh, Johnson Controls stopped manufacturing into specific devices back around 2014, I believe. And since that time, uh, you know, those networks are still out there and there are, you know, they've had to take steps to basically keep these systems viable in different ways, but it's getting harder to find, uh, you know, technicians that will work on the older stuff, things like that. You know, Johnson Controls does have quite a few techs that still can, but you're starting to see in at least around in our areas people that seem to be more inclined to gravitate toward the newer technologies the newer devices and things like that with a very good reason one of the big problems with some of those older devices and i think i've talked about it in some of the older other videos that i've done uh, when we're talking about these older devices we're talking about software that is used to program them, the GX9100, the HVAC Pro, that kind of software was out of date like, you know, 30 years ago. That stuff goes back, I think it's originally like a DOS-based program. And it is, you know, they haven't updated it since. So, with the force technology changes in that, uh, you know, because of the age of that technology, uh, you know, that's why we're starting to see more people gravitate t more towards the newer devices, the BACnet devices, which BACnet is another form of communication. It is more of an industry standard where, uh, you know, devices from different manufacturers can talk to one another. And that is typically what a lot of companies, a lot of institutions and organizations are installing. Uh, you know, whether it is a tritium-based system, whether it's Metasys or whatever, a BACnet system is one that allows for a little easier communication between manufacturers for the devices, you know. So, so what do we do with some of this older N2 stuff? Well, obviously, we're going to have to upgrade a lot of it. And the way that we can do that, there's a different ways that it can be done. A lot of the newer Johnson Controls devices do have the capability of working on an N2 network. However, I'm not going to say that they work smoothly on an N2 network. Okay, there are some devices that do not work very smoothly at all. A uh, perfect example, some of the newer TECs, the, the TEC controllers, uh, you know, that are out there. There are some of those models out there that will do either N2, they will do BACnet, things like that. Those newer devices, even though you can put them on an N2 network, uh, the PRN files that you can get with those, and, and it's the same with you know VAVs and things like that. The PRN file that you can use, or that you can use and get your get your hands on, whether you're writing the program in CCT or whether you download the tool, the PRN file from you know the TEC manufacturer, those files in a lot of ways are useless. If any of you guys out there have ever had to pull in the points onto an N2 network using a PRN file from a new device, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the way that those points are pulled in, just for example, like on a VAV, I know we had put some uh, VAVs in one of our buildings. We had a few of the older N2 ones fail, so we put in a newer generation VAV. That VAV, of course, writing the program in CCT, it allowed me to generate the PRN file to where we can pull those control points into Metasys. 
when we pull those points in, those points came in in a very confusing way. For example, the occupancy command for that VAV came in as a numeric value instead of it being very simple as far as like occupied, unoccupied, standby, like what we normally see. It came in just as a, a variable, a number. And to occupy it, you would have to know which number you needed to put that in. Okay, things like that was an easy fix. That's the easy stuff. Basically, you can go in, blow that point out, pull that point in manually, and then set it to the type of point that you need. And that's what we did. Once you do a couple of them, you can just go back and look and see how you pulled it in, and it's no big deal. There are other points that are a bit more complicated. Uh, I know that on a TEC that we replaced back, it's been a few years now, that TEC was originally designed as a backnet device, but would work on an N2 trunk. It can be told to talk on N2. That TEC, all of the points that came in for it, using the PRN file, the overwhelming majority of points on it were garbage. That PR file was just trash. We literally had to set, me and another technician, we had to set for about two days going point by point within the system on that TEC to correctly identify that system or those points within the system. You know, those are some of the steps that we had to take to be able to pull those in. And the reason that we did that is basically instead of someone having to just look at a number and then have to try to figure out exactly what a different number value means as far as the state of the controller, we decided to go through it and set it up the right way. You know, we sat down, we went through that controller point by point, and we got it to where it would work. You know, the older technology, the older network, it's still out there. We have no choice. We're not going to be able to upgrade an entire building all at once. Uh, so we have to do what we have to do. As devices fail, we upgrade those devices. And that's what many of you guys, I'm sure, you are probably in that same kind of situation. Uh, I'm sure that some of you all are also aware that depending on the number of newer devices you put on that N2 trunk, you've probably noticed that the N2 trunk probably is a little slower than usual. It has been our experience that when you put a specific number of or a certain level of newer devices on an old N2 trunk, that trunk becomes very unstable. In fact, we had one building that the N2 trunk became useless. I mean, the building was loaded up anyways, and with the changes that happened during a, an upgrade to a newer version of Metasys, as well as the addition of newer devices, uh, putting them on that N2 trunk, that N2 trunk was useless. It, was, it locked it up. In fact, we had to go in, actually pull network just for the backnet devices just to be able to get that building back in operation. Some of you guys may have experienced that as well in some of your institutions. This is something that is known. It's something that's out there, and it is a, it's not going to go away. I mean, that is a problem that we have. That's just part of the business. That's part of what we do is just trying to figure out these problems and make things work. So what do you do whenever possible? Get that N2 stuff out of there. Uh, that's what we do. We don't even try to fool with it anymore. If we have a device fail, we replace it with a newer device, and eventually, uh, you know, we will hope, hopefully be able to, to go ahead and flip the remaining devices over to BACnet or the remaining trunk and get that whole trunk in some of these buildings over. That will get it completely away from N2. That's just some of what we run into. Another thing is Silverlight. Microsoft Silverlight, depending on when you're watching this video, it is going to be going away. Microsoft is going to be ending support. And for some of you guys out there, some of the graphics and stuff that you have will be useless. It will not be, uh, you will not be able to use them. I uh, know that what a lot of the things that Johnson Controls is doing is they are setting up graphics for the new MUI. Uh, the, you know, the Metasys user interface, that's the newest thing, that's the latest and greatest for now. And that's where... You know, anytime any jobs are done on your site, you want to make sure that they set up 
the new MUI graphics. Go ahead and get those user views set up. Have your techs or whoever it is that's doing the project, the LSS or whatever, have them to go ahead, set up everything necessary for the MUI because that's what the future of Metasys is going to be. I believe at version 12, my understanding of the SMP, the site management portal, will require licensing. You will actually have to purchase a license to be able to use site management portal. And other than that, it will be just the MUI. My opinion about it is site management portal is basically gonna become very similar to Metasys uh, the way that Workbench is with Tritium. I think that that's something, and there again guys, I have no information that, ba that says that. That's just personal opinion. That's 100% my personal opinion on it. Just, you know, looking at the system, looking at the direction that I see things going, that's just what I believe it's gonna be. It's basically, the SMP will be similar to Workbench. It's going to be, you know, when you go in to make changes and things like that. Who knows what the future is going to hold. But this is just a quick video that I wanted to do, guys. Um, you know, I'm sure that some of you all may be running into some of the same issues that we've had with the N2s and the solar technology. Let me know down in the comments below. Let me hear from you. I'd like to know your thoughts, what you guys have done, that sort of thing. But guys, if you got any questions, leave them down there in the comments. I'll try to answer as many as I can. And, you know, stay tuned for more videos. I've got a couple more that will be coming out just anytime soon, depending on what you're, when you're watching this one. But guys, thanks for watching. Check out the links down in the description, and we'll see you next time.